After months of waiting for the rainy weather to clear, we're finally getting started on restoring this old stone cottage into a beautiful tiny house. And last week we took our first big steps by removing the roof. Well, almost removing the roof. That's so much heavier than I thought it was gonna be. We'll have to have a little rethink on that one. So we're back down at the tiny house and we are refusing to be defeated by this massive ridge beam. Today is the day that we're going to try and get this ridge beam safely lowered down. Over the last few days we've been coming up with various different ideas of our own and thank you very much because off the back of the last video you have also suggested so many different options which we are very grateful for. So we had a few different options to think about and the first one was one that you guys suggested which was basically off this scaffold platform, raise it up a bit to get us up to the ridge beam, then put a car jack underneath on one end, lift that one end up to get it over and onto the gable. Once it's on there, go to the other end, do the same thing. And then once it's on there, we can then lower it off the back with ropes. The second option was again to use the car jack, raise up the scaffold to support the beam or get some props to support the beam from the ground and then get a chainsaw and chop it down into smaller pieces using ropes and things to make sure that nothing falls. The third option was to get a block and tackle or something mechanical to raise it up and then try and lower it down. And the final option, which is the one we've decided to go with, is to simply knock out part of the gable end so we don't have to lift the rafter at all. That will allow us to then have a straight before it gets to the slope of where it is now to then pull it, roll it to the edge, and then safely and in a controlled manner, roll it down off the back of the building. So that's the plan. One thing is we're racing against the clock a little bit today because remember in the last video when I said this, we're not gonna have any more rain, so now we can afford to take it off and not have the threat of rain coming in and ruining it. Well, yesterday we had rain. We've had rain again this morning and we've got rain and thunderstorms forecast for this afternoon. So we're trying to work around the weather and hopefully we can get this done because both of us will have a big weight lifted off our shoulders when this beam is on the ground. Well, slight change of plan. Well, not really. We're still gonna carry on and try and do it, but as you can see, in the time it took us to get back up to the house, get the generator, get the drill that we need, get all the tools that we need and get them back down to the tiny house. This storm's just appeared out of nowhere. There's thunder in the distance and you can hear that it's getting closer. Just had to go and put Ted back inside because poor boy is petrified of thunder and lightning. He's been like that since he was little. So as soon as he hears the thunder, he just wants to go in. So we've put him in. He can stay nice and safe in his bed. Not Pop though, she is absolutely fearless. So she's gonna stay out with us. I don't know if you can hear that thunder. She's quite happy keeping herself occupied, hunting, running around, doing what dogs do and having fun. have just opened and unfortunately as soon as we've taken off the roof we've got nowhere to shelter. Oh, <laughs> Quick little recess? I think so. Okay. <laughs> Poppy is such a brave little dog but she does not like the rain or getting wet and she's just rocketed back to the house so I'm gonna go let her in. Ricky actually came down just with his hammer and chisel. So I'm just gonna see how he's getting on because the rain has stopped and I've made us both a brew. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Oh, nice oh. work. You've got a lot off already. Yeah. 
How's it going? It was going pretty well until about two seconds ago when I just smashed through and the chisel's gone flying off the building. Would you, <laughs> mind, would you mind grabbing it for me? Yeah. Right, so that's both gable ends now kind of flattened next to the beam, but we're still battling with the rain. It's only due to get heavier over the next hour or two. So neither of us think it's wise to be manhandling a slippery pole down the building in the rain. It's just got disaster written all over it. So we're gonna wait it out, come back to it tomorrow afternoon when it should be dry. And for now, we're gonna get out the rain. Currently I'm using the world's smallest shelter to keep me out of it and keep me dry. What a difference one day can make from the thunderstorms yesterday to this beautiful sunny morning we've got today. So just before we start the day and try and get this beam down, just wanted to say off the back of the last video, there was quite a few comments of people saying, can't you just keep this beam up? It looks to be in good condition. Can't you just save yourself the headache of getting it down? Well, this beam is really not in good condition to be kept up. It's first of all, riddled with woodworm as you can see behind me there's all areas where it's literally just pff, crumbling and dusting away and there's many places like this it also has carpenter bees going in and out of it and then also where this roof has been leaking for god knows how many years it's got really wet so for us keeping it's not an option we want to get rid of it get some nice fresh wood in so yeah it is a bit more work but definitely well worth it So we're just using the old rafters just to direct the beam away from the building so it doesn't bang into this back wall. And it looks a bit ramshackle, but hopefully it'll still do the trick. <laughs> training for a boxing match. <laughs> so after some very careful engineering calculations, which consisted of us just checking that our ropes were long enough, we've got a plan and it starts with these ropes being attached to either end of the beam. And then these are going to be attached onto the front of our van. We're then going to use the van to ease the beam down the back of the building. We are then gonna have this third rope, which is gonna be tied around the middle of the beam. This is gonna go off the back and then kind of tug of war style. Victoria and I are both gonna get on that and pull it to get this to the edge of the area where I cleared the stones off yesterday. And then hopefully the car will hold it in place before we can start rolling it down. How are you feeling? <laughs> a little bit daunted by the task ahead, but you know, time's upon us. We just gotta do it. Are you ready? No. Three, two, <laughs> one. <laughs> Not going. Right. Well, that first attempt was a big old fail. So we're now doubling up the rope so we can pull one each. See if that has any effect. Three, two, one. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay. I think we've discovered that by having the ropes on it, we're not actually trying to pull it and turn 
the beam to roll down the back. We're actually just trying to slide it, which is why it's so difficult because I've just come up onto the top of the building and I can just move this beam so easily with one hand. So now Victoria's gonna stay down the back. I'm gonna roll it off and I think that should work. We need to move really quickly because I can hear thunder. We've got heavy rain in the distance and the sky is turning completely black. It's so close, we've moved it about two foot now and we're right at the edge of where it's going to fall down the slope. Woo! That's pulled pretty tight, shall I move the car closer? Let's do it. to get the beam all the way down the slope and it's now resting on that back wall. It's all the way down the slope. The van has done its job and done its job very well so we can take the ropes off and use manpower and brute force to get it the rest of the way. Well, I am over the moon about that. I don't know about you. Yeah, hold me steady. Okay. <laughs> the fact that that came down, nobody's injured, no damage to the building. Total result. Yeah, absolute <laughs> result. I am really am chuffed. Even the rafters in the back of the building are completely undamaged. I mean, they don't look worse than when they came off the building. No. Even the sun came out to celebrate with us. <laughs> Today we actually have cause for a double celebration because it marks the anniversary of when Poppy actually arrived at the farm. And it also marks her second birthday because the vet last year gave her this day as her birthday because she was a little stray beforehand. Come on in. Happy birthday, dear Poppy. Happy birthday to you. Did you make a wish? <laughs> Am I giving the whole thing in one? No, I don't give the whole thing in one. Okay. <laughs> Where Good are you going? Girl. <laughs> oh, bird. While the dogs certainly seem to have approved of these, I made some muffins. They've got tuna, carrot, oats, oregano and egg in them. Oh, and a little bit of flour to bind it together. They are human friendly too. Do you want one? No, thank you. <laughs> thank you to everybody in your comments being concerned about Poppy in the last video. She's doing much better now. Her sneezing has stopped completely, which is amazing. It was definitely a gradual process after she had more and more days of the uh, anti-inflammatories. So we definitely think there was some sort of trauma when she went for the lizard something up her nose had a bit of an impact and I think it was just swelling. So anytime she sniffed or anything went up there, it was just aggravating it really quickly because her nose Nasal canal, canal. Yeah, was so closed. But now it's completely stopped and she's doing well. But yeah, thank you for all your nice comments and concern. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week when we're hopefully going to complete the plunge pool. We took on the beam and we won. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>